Welcome, everyone, to the season finale of the Fall Out to Lunch series. This is organized by the ESIP Education Committee and hosted by the Earth Science Information Partners. My name is Margaret Mooney. I'm speaking to you from Madison, Wisconsin. Today, I'm delighted to introduce Becca Scully, who works for the USGS as part of the Pacific Northwest Aquatic Monitoring Partnership. And she's going to demonstrate the Monitoring Explorer Map Tool. Thanks, Becca. Great, thank you. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. My name is Becca Scully. Um, I work for uh, USGS and PNAMP, the Pacific Northwest Aquatic Monitoring Partnership. And I'm going to talk to you today about one of our tools. So just to get started, um, I just want to set the context. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to think about integrating multiple resources so we can create one big data delivery of uh, of day delivery to people who need to make decisions. So we're trying to think about ways to use different information and bring it all together and help support decision makers and create a deliverable product. And to do that, we need to know who's doing what, where, when, and how. Um, we need to know who on the landscape is collecting what data, um, what protocols and process they use to collect that data, um, when they're collecting it, what design they use, do they uh, you know, go there because it was next to their office. Do they go there as part of a probabilistic random design? So to really understand and get to the point of delivering data to decision makers, we need to understand this who, what, where, when, and how. And that can be difficult because, as we know, there are multiple people on the landscape monitoring um, based on their needs. So there are different people in different jurisdictions, um, you know, federal, state, tribal, and so on. So understanding who's doing what, where, and when, and how is, is a challenging process. So to, to do that, um, we started to build an infrastructure to support this collaboration and coordination of monitoring data. But we're really focused on monitoring. Most of the long-term events where um, people tend to return and they're trying to assess a uh, population either status and trend or impact of action. So we started to build an infrastructure to support this collaboration and, and sharing of information. So online tools. Um, and that tool and the main tool that we built is called monitoringresources.org. And you can go there and you can see the tool set um, and you can understand what information, different information can be entered into it. And what, what we've done is we've built different step-by-step um, -step processes for users to enter their study design, so when they're sampling and where they're sampling and how they pick those sites. Their methods and protocols, so that's the, um, the how they're sampling. How are they going out there and collecting that data? Um, and then we've built a tool to uh, allow you to report back your uh, design and how you've implemented it. So I've collected data here, I didn't collect data here. So then we know definitively where there's data on the landscape. And then we built the Monitoring Explorer tool set, uh, Map Viewer, which is what I'm gonna talk about today in a little more detail and show you uh, a live demo of. And that is a tool that allows multiple different programs and projects to put their data collection locations on one centralized map. So I'm gonna go to a live demo here and show you a little bit about this Monitoring Explorer tool. So like I said, uh, monitoringresources.org is an online tool you can go to, and it has sports documentation of methods and protocols, study designs, and sample designs associated with monitoring. You can use it to search for different information. You can see other people's protocols and methods and designs here. But the tool I really want to focus on is the Monitoring Explorer. And to see Monitoring Explorer, you go to Explore, Explore, and it will take you to this online map viewer. I'm just going to click over there because my internet is not super fast here. And so this is a Monitoring and Explorer um, website and the web tool. And what, is, what we have done here is we've started to bring multiple different programs, data collection locations, into one centralized map. It's sort of your general um, map viewer uh, interface that you would see. And what you can do is you can turn on these different monitoring programs. And we are developed in the Pacific Northwest, so that's where we've started our effort. So as you can see, we're sort of focused up here in the Pacific Northwest. And you can say, okay, there are different uh, people collecting different types of data, and I can turn them on and off based on what you know. You can get some additional information about them by clicking on here. You can get the metadata associated with that program. As you can see this is the PIBO program, and that their data is on the map, and you can get a URL and some links to the protocols and the study designs that they apply. You can go back to this map, and you can say, okay, I'm interested in knowing more about data um, or who's collecting data in a certain area and you can search by things like bounding boxes you can draw bounding boxes around sets of points 
and you can then use this tool and click search and it will then highlight and select all those sites in that bounding box or that area and you can see a grid view of those sites you can see the location and who's collecting it where it is and some metadata about it in addition um, let me just reset my map here you can search by a lot of other different types of criteria eco regions uh, hucks we do a lot of aquatic monitoring um, you can also search by monitoring types you can search here by monitoring types so we have climate and weather disturbance fish and so on and again once you pick a type it will then highlight those points on the map and you can see them in the grid or if you're more interested in sort of zooming around and looking at sites so maybe you know you're going to search and um, you're going to sample in this area around Baker City Oregon you can zoom in here and you can say okay uh, here's a bunch of sites um, I wonder if there's more information about them you can click this identify button here and then you can click on an individual site and it will give you the metadata associated with the sampling that has gone on at that site so for example at this site this is a champ monitoring site you can say okay that's interesting um, but I don't know too much about that you can come over here and you can find the organization um, who's doing that sampling you can find information about the monitoring program so that will give you more information on what champ is you can find the data repository so where that data is actually stored I'd like to stress that we don't store data we just store locations so you can come here and, and search out how to get to that data and then you can click the download link and then it'll pull that data from that source you can see that um, the site's been visited twice um, you can see the actual lat long and so on so this tool is pretty powerful and has a lot of different information and search functionality built in here but as you can see it's a little bit specific to the Pacific Northwest and you might be thinking well why why are you here and why I'm here is because we are working to expand the monitoring resources tool and the monitoring explorer outside of um, our current region and our current subject matter which is we're pretty aquatic focused so for example we we're working with the North American bat monitoring program to expand this tool set and to build on it and to create a way for users to select grid cells so we're, we're building upon this um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to create this enterprise tool set which has uh, which has the which has the baseline um, functionality built into monitoring resources and then we've built APIs um, out of monitoring resources to build these other uh, lightweight applications and platforms on and then those APIs feed back information into monitoring resources which we then can put on a monitoring floor or map and allow more people to search and see who's doing what where when and how our ultimate goal is to get a lot of different um, subject matters and regions and areas on that map so then we can say okay you guys as, as researchers and scientists figure out a cool way to use this data if we know where data is and how it was collected we can think of new and innovative ways to use it to inform decision making so like I said um, we have a suite of APIs that allow data to be fed back and forth we have documentation for that if you're interested in understanding what's in modern resources how you can get data out or if you're interested in getting data into that tool that would allow you to then participate in this map um, of multiple different programs in multiple different regions and areas and with that I only have 10 minutes so uh, <laughs> I am gonna stop talking and I'm gonna say if you're interested in just learning more um, we have a, we have resources on our website including some uh, longer presentations you can go to monitoringresources.org or you could contact me at this pnamp.info at gmail.com um, or uh, you know we'll find a way to connect if you're interested in learning more about the tools either the map explorer or any of the other tools that I briefly touched on with the methods and protocol documentation and the metadata documentation and so on so with that I think I'll uh, see if there's any questions and go from there thanks Becca that was great um, I see there's one question in the chat box it says or a comment could look into including data from long-term ecological research pro projects I guess yeah could you uh, expand if you had any ideas on which or uh, I mean we're looking for contacts and people to reach out to um, and I mean I could reach back to you and 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 sort of figure out if you had 
any ideas? This is Luann. I'm just going to check. Um, have you thought of any ways to incentivize folks to register their data sets with this map? Yeah, so the ways that we've thought of are um, we have we're, we have prototype metadata builder, which would then allow you to use the tool. And so we work for the federal government, and we're when um, USGS scientists release their data, they're required to release a metadata record. And we have started working on a prototype that will allow them to use the modern resources tool to enter their information and then export the data into that standard metadata record that then could be uh, submitted for documentation um, to the USGS or any sort of journal that they want to uh, submit their publications to. There's, there's, there's a big metadata release process, basically. Gotcha. Um, that makes sense. That would definitely that, incentivize someone if it will produce their metadata record for them. <laughs> right. That's that's our main idea. We haven't gotten past that. I mean, um, the the reason that we have well, some other incentives is that we have been working with these larger programs to support tracking their sample uh, implementation. So if you have a a national, we've been working with some national scale programs and they're having trouble tracking who's doing what where. So they have um, they have a unified design across the whole country, but they don't have a centralized system or a way for people to go and select sites. They're trying to work with multiple different partners, sometimes like up to 20 partners. So we've incentivized them to show them how they can use the tool and, and sort of use it as a way to track um, how their implementation is happening. And then that data reports back to them. And uh, and it can be used um, in analysis. So we're trying to figure ways to report data back to people, and then um, and then they can use it again in their own sort of analysis. And I'm a, I will look into this long-term ecological research network. Thank you for sending me that link, and uh, see what I can figure out from there. <laughs>